I am incredibly excited about the rate of progress, but I also am cautious and uh, I would say like, I don't know, I feel small next to it or something. I think this is beyond something that we all fully yet understand where it's going to go. Uh, this is, this is I, I believe, uh, among the biggest, maybe it'll turn to be the biggest technological revolutions humanity will have ever produced. And I, I feel privileged to be here. Uh, I feel curious and interested in what's gonna happen. Um, but I do think things are gonna change quite substantially. I, I think humans have a wonderful ability to adapt and things that seem amazing will become the new normal very quickly. Uh, we will figure out how to use these tools to just do things we could never do before. And I think it will be quite extraordinary, but these are going to be tools that are capable of things that we can't quite wrap our heads around. So this came up when Senator Fetterman was asking him about the big, sometimes scary, future of AI. So Altman uses phrases like, I feel small next to it. And this is beyond something that we all fully yet understand where it's going to go. This isn't your typical tech CEO hyping up their latest product with complete certainty. There's a layer of humility there. Or maybe it's a very strategic way of acknowledging the immense power and unpredictability they're dealing with. When he says these tools are capable of things we can't quite wrap our heads around, it points to the emergent properties of these large models. You train them on vast amounts of data, and they start doing things the creators didn't explicitly program them to do, or even anticipate. Think about it. If the people building these systems are admitting there are aspects they can't fully predict or comprehend, what does that mean for the rest of us? It underscores the black box nature of some of these AI systems. We know the inputs, we see the outputs, but the complex internal workings that lead from one to the other can be incredibly opaque. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if the outputs are consistently beneficial and aligned with human values, but it becomes a huge concern when they're not or when the potential for misuse is high. It suggests that controlling or even understanding the limits of these systems is a massive ongoing challenge. It also makes the call for independent auditing and safety research, which Altman himself has supported, even more critical. If the creators are still surprised by what their creations can do, then we definitely need more eyes on this. And this directly leads into his next big statement, this idea that AGI could be the greatest technological revolution humanity has yet seen. The biggest technological revolution humanity will ever have produced. That's not a small claim. We're talking about something potentially more impactful than the agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, or the internet revolution. Why would he say that? Well, those previous revolutions transformed specific aspects of human existence. Agriculture changed how we get food and allowed for settled societies. The industrial revolution changed how we make things and where we live, leading to urbanization and mass production. The internet revolutionized information access and communication. AGI, or artificial general intelligence, if achieved, would be different because it's not about transforming one specific domain. It's about creating something that can, in theory, transform all domains by virtue of its general problem solving and learning capabilities. If you have a system that can learn and perform any intellectual task that a human can, the potential applications are almost limitless, from curing diseases and solving climate change to completely reshaping economies and yes, even warfare. When Altman makes this claim, he's tapping into that idea of a general purpose technology, but on an unprecedented scale. The printing press was a general purpose technology. Electricity was. The internet is. A GZing, I would be the ultimate general purpose technology, because intelligence itself is the ultimate tool for solving problems and creating new things. This is why the stakes are so high, and why the conversations around safety and alignment are so urgent. If this is truly the biggest revolution, we need to be incredibly careful about how we navigate it. It's not just another gadget. It's potentially a fundamental shift in what it means to be human and how our world operates. This also hints at the idea of the singularity, which Senator Fetterman brought up, a point where AI intelligence starts to self-improve at an accelerating rate, leading to an intelligence explosion. Altman doesn't explicitly endorse the more extreme versions of that, but his language about revolution and things changing quite substantially certainly nods in that direction. Now, to build this revolutionary AGI, Altman also made it very clear that the resource requirements are going to be, and I quote, 
staggering a million, 10 million, even 100 million times more compute than what we already consider a very large training run today. That is just an astronomical figure. To put this in perspective, training models like GPT-4 already cost tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, of dollars and consumes vast amounts of energy equivalent to small cities. If we're talking about orders of magnitude more than that, what are the implications? First, energy. Oldman himself said the cost of AI will eventually converge with the cost of energy. If we need that much compute, we're going to need an almost unimaginable amount of cheap, clean, and reliable energy. This is why he's talking about natural gas in the short term, and then, crucially, advanced nuclear, both fission and fusion, in the medium term. He's essentially saying that the future of AI is inextricably linked to breakthroughs in energy production. Without that, the kind of AGI he envisions might simply be too expensive or too environmentally damaging to build. Second, economic and geopolitical implications. Who can afford to build these systems if it takes a Project Stargate scale investment, hundreds of billions, or even trillions eventually, then only a handful of nations or mega corporations will be able to play in this league. This could lead to an incredible concentration of power. It also explains why he's so focused on domestic chip production and infrastructure. If the US doesn't have the foundational hardware and energy, it can't build these next generation models, and it risks falling behind. Third, the hardware itself. A 100 million fold increase in compute isn't just about more of the same chips. It probably implies fundamental breakthroughs in chip architecture, new types of processors, or even entirely new computing paradigms. It's a call for a revolution in hardware to match the revolution in software. This is a long-term vision, and it's clear OpenAI is thinking on a scale that few others are publicly discussing. It's not just about the next model, it's about the infrastructure for a completely new era of intelligence. Now this heavy reliance on scaling up compute and data with large language models is not without its critics. People like Yam LeCun, one of the godfathers of deep learning and chief AI scientist at Meta, have been pretty vocal in their skepticism that LLMs alone can lead to AGI. But I tell you one thing, which may surprise a few of you. Um, I'm not so interested in LLMs anymore. LeCun often talks about LLMs lacking a true understanding of the world, a world model. He argues they're very good at predicting the next word and a sequence based on statistical patterns in their training data, but they don't truly reason or plan in the way humans do. They don't have intuitive physics or a deep causal understanding. He's called them things akin to stochastic parrots in the past, though he's nuanced that. His vision for AGI involves systems that can learn more like animals and humans do through observation and interaction with the world building up these internal models of how things work. He believes we need more than just scaling up language models. We need different architectures and different approaches to learning. So when Altman is all in on this path of massive scaling for LLMs, it's worth remembering that there are very smart people in the field who think that approach, while powerful for current applications, might hit a wall or won't be sufficient to achieve true human-level general intelligence. Lacoon and others are pushing for research into alternative or complementary approaches. It's a debate about the fundamental path to AGI. Is it primarily about scaling what we have, or do we need new conceptual breakthroughs? This brings us to the question, what even is AGI? It's a term that gets thrown around a lot, but the definition can be a bit slippery. Technically, AGI refers to an AI that can understand learn and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks at a level comparable to or exceeding that of a human being. It's not about being good at one specific thing, like playing chess or translating languages, but about having a general cognitive ability that can adapt to new unseen problems. This implies capabilities like reasoning, problem solving, abstract thinking, common sense, and learning from experience with a high degree of autonomy. A key aspect is the ability to transfer learning from one domain to another, something humans do naturally, but current AI largely struggles with. Philosophically, the discussion around AGI often gets tangled up with questions of consciousness, self-awareness, and sentience. Would an AGI necessarily be conscious? Could it have subjective experiences? These are deep and frankly, currently unanswerable questions. Many researchers and developers in the field, including it seems OpenAI, tend to focus on functional AGI, 
a system that can perform the tasks associated with general intelligence, regardless of whether it possesses genuine consciousness in the human sense. The economic implications, the safety concerns, the societal impact, these largely stem from the capabilities of such a system, not necessarily its internal subjective state, if any. However, the philosophical questions are not irrelevant, especially when we start talking about the rights or moral status of highly intelligent autonomous entities. For now, the race is primarily about building systems with general competence. So how do the big players like OpenAI and Google DeepMind define AGI? And is the LLM path, as championed by Altman, a viable route to get there, perhaps even by 2027? OpenAI, in its charter, defines AGI as, quote, highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work. This is a very practical, economically focused definition. It's less about mimicking the full spectrum of human cognition and more about creating systems that can do most jobs better than humans can. It's a definition tied to utility and economic impact. Google DeepMind, and Demis Hassabis specifically, has often spoken about AGI in terms of systems that can learn to solve a wide array of complex problems, including scientific discovery, with a level of generality and adaptability that approaches or surpasses human ability. There is perhaps a stronger emphasis on general problem solving and fundamental understanding. Can LLMs really hit AGI by 2027? If you ask Sam Altman, it's basically a confident, yeah, we're getting there. The idea is that as we keep scaling these models, more data, more compute, they just keep getting better, almost like new abilities magically show up. We've already seen LLMs go from just chatting to coding, doing math, even some reasoning. Then there's this whole thing with multimodal models, ones that can handle text, images, audio, even video, which helps them understand the world more like we do. On top of that, these models are starting to act like agents, not just responding to prompts, but actually doing stuff, browsing the web, using tools, even running robots and labs. And with better alignment techniques like RLHF and constitutional AI, the hope is we'll be able to steer these smarter models in the right direction. So yeah, 2027 sounds wild, but it's not totally off the table. But many experts are skeptical of such a short timeline, pointing to the fundamental limitations we're about to discuss. However, the rate of progress in the last few years has surprised almost everyone, so ruling it out completely is difficult. Okay, so while the progress with these large language models has been absolutely mind-blowing, and Sam Altman himself is talking about this potentially being the biggest revolution ever, we also got to be real about where things stand right now and the serious hurdles that are still in the way if we're talking about true AGI. It's not just smooth sailing from here. First off, there's the whole hallucination and reliability issue. Altman himself admitted, and it's something we see all the time, that these models still, you know, make stuff up. They can sound super confident, super fluent, but then spit out something that's just plain wrong or doesn't make any sense. Now, here's a really interesting and slightly worrying twist. Altman has apparently also acknowledged that as these models get newer and bigger, think something like a hypothetical GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, they might actually hallucinate more in some ways. That's a bit counterintuitive, right? You'd think bigger and newer means more accurate across the board. But it seems that as they become more creative or more capable of generating complex responses, the propensity to invent facts or go off on tangents might not shrink as fast as we'd hope, or could even temporarily increase in certain contexts before they figure out how to wrangle it. For AGI, especially if you're thinking about using it for really critical stuff, that level of unreliability is just not going to fly. We need these things to be dependable. Then there's the big critique from folks like Jan LeCun. These models often lack true common sense in what he calls world models. They're amazing at recognizing patterns in language and predicting the next word. That's how they work. But they don't inherently understand, say, that if you drop a ball, it falls down, or that water is wet in the same way a toddler does. They can talk about these things because they've read about them countless times, but it's more like a sophisticated mimicry based on statistical relationships rather than a deep, grounded understanding of cause and effect in the physical world. It's like they've read every book in the library but never actually lived in the world the books describe. And that leads to another problem. 
they can be pretty brittle and struggle with out of distribution problems. This just means they do best when they're dealing with stuff that's similar to the massive piles of text and data they were trained on. But if you throw a truly new, a truly weird situation at them, something they haven't really seen before in their training, their performance can drop off a cliff. True general intelligence, the kind we're talking about with AGI, needs to be able to handle the unexpected to generalize robustly to things it's never encountered. And let's not forget the sheer computational cost and data hunger. Altman was very clear about this. The amount of compute needed is already enormous, and he's talking about it growing by a million, 10 million, even 100 million times for future systems. This isn't just about finding enough GPUs. It's about energy consumption, the environmental impact, and just the raw economic cost. Can we actually sustain that kind of scaling? And is it even the most efficient way to build truly intelligent systems? But it's a huge open question. Then, as these things get more powerful and potentially more autonomous, the alignment and control problem becomes absolutely critical. This is a massive area of research and frankly, a lot of anxiety. How do you make sure a system that might become way smarter than the people who built it continues to do what we want it to do and stays aligned with human values? How do you even define human values in a way an A I can understand and reliably follow? especially if it starts developing its own goals or interpretations. This is the kind of stuff that keeps people up at night, and rightly so. Finally, there's the issue of interpretability and explainability. For the most part, these huge neural networks are black boxes. We can see what data goes in, we can see what answers come out, but the exact step-by-step -step reasoning process inside is often a mystery, even to the researchers. If an AI makes a critical decision, say in medicine or finance, and it's wrong, or even if it's right, we need to be able to understand why it made that decision. Right now, getting these models to truly explain their thinking in a way that's accurate and understandable is a really tough nut to crack. So while LLMs have unlocked incredible capabilities and are driving the current AI boom, the path from here to AGI, especially by 2027, is far from clear and fraught with challenges. It's not just about making them bigger. It's about making them smarter, more reliable, more grounded, and crucially, safer. Sam Altman's testimony really pulls back the curtain on the sheer ambition and the profound uncertainty at the heart of the AGI quest. It's a technological revolution that could reshape our world, but it's also one where even the architects admit they can't fully see where it's all heading. The call for massive investment in infrastructure and talent, coupled with a plea for sensible, innovation-friendly regulation and a deep dose of humility, paints a complex picture of the road ahead. What do you guys think?